Hey, it's Deborah Atkinson, host of the Flipping 50 TV show and the Flipping 50 podcast. And I'm inserting this video right into a blog. So if you're finding the, the video first and you haven't read the blog, I'm going to link to it down below. So make sure you go and watch it. But I want to talk about something super exciting. So first of all, let me ask you a question. How much would you love to boost your fat burning potential by 29%? if you're already exercising because you want to boost fat burning and or you want to keep your lean tissue, keep looking good, feeling good for the future, or you really want to lose now and need to, chances are if you could boost it, you probably would. And 29%, that's almost 30%. So let's say that's a third more calories that you could burn specifically fat. So we want to talk about that, right? We don't just want to burn calories so that we lose weight and that's not it. So no, if you're reading, you still got it girl, the after 50 fitness formula for women, the book I wrote, you know, it's not about calories in and calories out. It's about your hormones. So we've got to really factor that in, especially now when we have so many hormones going in so many different directions, but I want to get back to the recent research that I've been doing. So this is a little gem right here. So you may have heard many times about the benefits of antioxidants in green tea. And it's very powerful for a lot of reasons, anti-aging. I'm not an anti-aging uh, professor, but what I am is a supporter of pro-aging. So being the best we can, best energy, feeling the best, doing the things we wanna do at every age. That's what I'm all about. So if you're all for pro-aging, antioxidants are still the rage. But the amount that you should get or that are really beneficial for green tea is we've got to drink about 10 cups a day. Now, I don't know about you, but that's prohibitive for me. I'm trying to get in all the water I need, not that green tea wouldn't kind of cross over and count but I'm also trying to get all the fruits and vegetables and all the protein I need and all the fiber and I don't have time to drink 10 cups of green tea a day. Even if I set out to do it and was really well intentioned, I would not get that done. So this solves a problem. So what this is, is culinary mashta. Mashta is finely milled green tea leaves. So basically it's a little powder. So literally it looks like green tea powder. So it's pretty if you like green. And one serving of this, so a serving is a teaspoon and that's about four grams, actually gives you everything that you would get in about 10 cups of green tea. So it's much simpler. So here's how I take it. I don't, I don't mix it with hot water or I don't make a latte with it because that's a little stronger kind of taste that I don't really appreciate. Now maybe you do, but the way I take this in and the way that helps me boost fat, coming back to that about your interval training, is I make a smoothie. So I use my Nutribullet and in seconds I can make a really quick pre-exercise snack. So my habit is to get up, I work for a couple of hours when I'm most creative, do a lot of writing, programming, that kind of work that just doesn't get done at another time of day, then I'll have a snack before I go and work out to take a break so I can come back kind of fresh, you know, my head cleared, ready to go and much more energy for the rest of the day. So I'll make a simple smoothie. So I use one of my protein shakes. This happens to be my plant-based, plant-powered girl. This is chocolate, one of my favorites. Everything's better with chocolate. Right, so I'll have a simple shake that maybe has protein powder in it, has a little mashta in it, and then has almond milk. Typically before exercise, you don't want a lot of fat and you don't want a lot of fiber because you want it to clear from your stomach. The purpose of having a snack before for me is twofold. One, by the time I'm ready to exercise and I've been up for a few hours, I'm hungry. I need something in and I'm gonna spend more energy and stick with it longer, work a little harder if I'm not hungry and distracted about it. it's time to eat. So I want that in. But also as an adult over 50, we're losing muscle mass faster than we gain it. 
and even exercise is a breakdown activity. So studies that I included in You Still Got It Girl suggest that about 24 grams of protein before moderate to vigorous exercise and up to about 40 grams of protein post-exercise and our muscles are ripe for that at about 90 minutes after exercise is ideal to help spare muscle loss that happens with age, that happens with the breakdown that happens during exercise. And if you're trying to lose fat, chances are you may be trying to cut calories. So if you have a high protein diet, that also will help. So the Mashta has something in it called catechins that help to burn calories. And there's a, you've heard of the fight or flight response the epinephrine and norepinephrine that happened during that fight or flight response, what we want to do is prolong a certain piece of that. And this inhibits something that stops it from happening. So you're kind of self administering stress when you exercise. Exercise is stress. Even a positive amount or dose of exercise is stress on your body because let's face it, your body would be more comfortable on the couch, right? So any extra exercise is stress. But what we wanna do is utilize the kind of stress for as long as we possibly can to help us burn more fat. That can happen a little bit easier with some of the properties that are in Mashta. So what you wanna do is have that about 90 minutes before exercise if possible. About an hour and 15 minutes, hour and a half or 90 minutes is perfect timing right before exercise. So I just did this this morning. I'm getting ready to go downstairs, get on my treadmill before I have an appointment a little bit later for a podcast to do my intervals. I'll do about a five minute warm up and I'll do 10 or 12 minutes of about 30 seconds really hard and a minute recovery and then I'll cool down for about four or five minutes and done. I'm done for the day with the cardio that I'm gonna do. But up to about two hours afterward, I'm gonna be burning a lot more fat because of this little guy and the protein helps as well keep the lean muscle tissue that I'm using during the exercise. So I'm going to have that pre, but I'm also going to have a great lunch about 90 minutes after my exercise bout that includes 20 to 30 grams of protein. So as an exerciser who exercises regularly, I can get by with less protein. That's not intuitive, right? You would have might maybe thought the opposite. The more active, the more protein I need, not so much. So if you're somebody who's sedentary, not very active, and you've been thinking, well, I don't need very much protein because I don't exercise. Actually, you need more protein because you're not stimulating your muscles. And for an active person who is quote unquote, we're gonna call you an athlete, if you're active, you're better at using the protein you take in, we call that muscle protein synthesis, you're better at it. And you can get better at it. If you're sedentary now, but you wanna become more active, you can absolutely get better at it over time. And so the more active you are, the lower in the range, up between 20 and 30 grams of protein at breakfast and at lunch and at dinner that you need. It's not a total at the end of the day. It's really important that you have each of those amounts because we can synthesize. We need a minimum amount at each meal and there's a maximum that we can use at each meal. So it's clearly dose and regularly spread throughout the day. Do the most good for helping with weight loss that spares muscle loss. So if you diet alone, you will lose quite a bit of muscle mass. In fact, a very recent study said 15 out of 16 people who dieted alone, no exercise, lost a lot of skeletal muscle, your lean muscle tissue, which means you slow your metabolism down so that if you ever gain weight back after a quote unquote diet, it's mostly fat you gain back and you've really done a damage to your metabolism and your ability to burn fat. It gets harder and harder the more you do that. 
but it's not too late. So those people who exercise and diet, so even if you might be cutting calories and you don't necessarily have to do that if you're choosing the right foods, you can eat more. Higher fat, higher quality protein, lots of fiber, great antioxidants in fruits and vegetables. There's no need to actually cut back on calories. The quality of food will take care of the quantity. In a healthy internal environment, wants to shed weight. Your body's lazy, doesn't like to carry around extra baggage if it doesn't have to. So it's only trying to hold on to weight and fat to protect you. So here's a hint, start eating right, healthy fat, probably some of the things you thought you shouldn't be having may be welcomed back into your diet and actually help you shed weight and be happier while you're doing it in the long run. So there's a place for everything. So back to the secret trilogy, mashta and protein before exercise in a super simple shake. Interval training as opposed to steady state training is a bigger fat burner post-exercise. So a lot of studies have shown that, and if you've read the blog or go read the blog, I list the studies that I proved and used in You Still Got It Girl. So they're in there. We know that to be a truth. So if you can combine the mashta, the protein before, and the interval training, you will have a really powerful trilogy for maintaining your lean muscle mass, helping to burn fat, and exercising in a lot less time than potentially you ever thought you could. So I'll see you on the flip side. Add your questions down below.